Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will be reviewing Central Tendency. By the end of this video, you'll be able to describe the principle of Central Tendency, explain the three measures of Central Tendency, and calculate mean, median, and mode. Please feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes. The concept of Central Tendency sounds complex, when it really is not. The root word of central is center, or the middle of something. The word tendency is referring to a location, or where something tends to be. When put together, central tendency is interested in where the center tends to be in a set of numbers. Recall that descriptive statistics aims to describe the data set. And the easiest way to do that is by having a representative or typical value to describe the numbers. In its simplest form, central tendency is a single score that defines the middle of the distribution. Recall that distribution is just a fancy way of describing how a set of numbers or a data set look like. And a distribution is usually organized into a table or graph. This single score is considered the most representative value in the set of numbers. In other words, when providing the central tendency values of a data set, you can make initial conclusions about the data set. We will discuss three measures of central tendency. The first and best measure of central tendency is the mean. The mean is a fancy way of saying the average of a set of numbers. The average is simply adding up all the values in a data set and then dividing by the total number. Because research uses both samples and populations, there are two types of mean. First is sample mean. Since mean begins with the letter M, the statistical notation for sample mean is a capital italicized M. The formula is M equals the sum of X divided by N. In other words, you add up all the X scores and divide by the total number of participants. Second is population mean. Recall that population parameters are written using Greek letters. Thus, in statistical notation, population is the Greek letter mu, which looks like a, a U with a front tail. The formula is the same as sample mean, but uses mu instead. So mu equals the sum of X divided by N. Now, let's do two practice problems. Example number one is a population of N equals four that has the following scores, 3, 7, 4, and 6. What is the mean? Since the problem states population, we should use mu. In other words, we're going to add 3 plus 7 plus 4 and 6, and then divide by 4. This gives us mu equals 20 divided by 4, which then gives us mu equals 5. Let's do one more. This practice problem uses real life data from the Psych 230 Google survey. Example number two is a word problem where it may not be as obvious what values to use and how to use them in the formula. Example number two. One semester, Dr. Z's courses reported a total of 151 dreams. If there were 76 students, what is the average number of dreams per person? Since the problem is referring to just one semester of Dr. Z's courses, this is a sample and not a population. So we will use sample mean, or m equals the sum of x divided by n. Recall that sum of x is referring to all the scores added up together. In this problem, we were not given the individual scores, but rather we were given the total number of dreams, which means they did it for us. 
Thus, the sum of x equals 151. Since there are 76 students or participants, n equals 76. So at this point, all we have to do is plug in the numbers to the formula and we get m equals 151 divided by 76, which equals 1.97 dreams. Now, let's take this up a notch. <laughs> These are the steps to calculate sample mean from a frequency table. It is important to note the orange stars. They are there to remind you that you need to know how to determine n and sum of x from a frequency table. And these are concepts from chapter one. This is an example of my Lego theme, where we will be taking Legos from previous chapters and building on them for the next chapter. Please write these steps on your handout. For this example, a health psychologist and pediatrician want to learn about the effects of breakfast on memory. To study this, they had a group of college students eat a healthy breakfast and then complete a memory test. Scores range from zero poor memory to 10 excellent memory. The frequency table here describes the data. What is the sample mean? I want you to pause the video here and attempt the problem on your own before I review the answer. So step one, we need to calculate n but we will use the formula n equals the sum of f because we are using frequency tables from the previous chapter. You will add up the frequencies to get n, which equals 20. Step two, we need to calculate the sum of x, but we will use the formula sum of x equals the sum of fx because we are using frequency tables. F here is referring to frequency and X is re referring to X scores. In this case, we need to multiply each F with X and then add up these values. In other words, five times two equals 10, six times zero equals zero and so forth. till you get 159. Step three, is time to calculate the sample mean by plugging in the n and the sum of x into the formula to get 7.95. Let's continue with the second measure of central tendency, median. If you've ever driven on a highway, you might know that the barrier between the two sides of the highway is called the median. Well, that's because median is a another fancy word for the middle. This photo documents the city of Adrian, Texas, which happens to be the middle or the median in distance between Los Angeles, California and Chicago, Illinois, along US Route 66. I hope you make this a stop in a future road trip. The definition of median is the midpoint of a distribution or a set of numbers. The key part though of this definition is that it needs to be ordered lowest to highest. Interestingly, there is no statistical notation for median. We simply write out the word median. Likewise, there is no formula to calculate median, but there are some important steps to follow, as indicated by the orange star. These are the steps for calculating median. It is important to note the orange star. It is to remind you that the most common mistake is to forget to put the numbers in order from lowest to highest. Please write these steps on your handout. There are two practice problems for median. Example number one, a sample has the following scores, two, six, three, eight, and five. What is the median? I want you to pause the video here and attempt the problem on your own before I review the answer. 
Now, the most common wrong answer is three. Students just look for the middle of the middle number and call it done. Well, first, we have to put the numbers in order. And since this is a set of odd numbers, you'll find the middle score, and that's your answer. Median equals five. For those students who are watching this video as part of a Nearpod lesson, example number two is posted on your chapter handout, and I'd like for you to complete that on your own and submit the answer to the Nearpod when this lecture video is finished. Let's finish with the third measure of central tendency, mode. Mode is considered the most frequent score in a distribution. In other words, it is the value that comes up the most in the data set. Mode is also the high peak of a distribution. In other words, when describing the data set in a graph, the mode will be the highest or tallest point in the graph. Like median, there is no statistical notation for mode. There is one practice problem for mode. Again, this is real life data from the Psych 230 Google survey from a previous semester. After looking at the frequency table, what is the mode for eye color? Remember that mode is the most frequent score in the data set. So you will look at uh, the highest F or the highest frequency and then scroll over to the corresponding X score. In this case, 41 students reported having brown hair. So the correct answer is mode equals brown. The most common mistake for students is to indicate that the answer is 41, which is the frequency. In this case, the X score in the data set is eye color, which is a nominal variable or a category with names. In summary, mean, median, and mode are used to describe the most representative value in a data set or a distribution. Central tendency is one of the first Lego building blocks to understanding statistics.